The eruption update for Alex's Caves is finally here, and it added a crap ton of stuff. I'll give you guys a showcase, and I'll try to go over everything that was added in this update. But before I get started with this video, I want to ask you all, if you enjoyed this type of content, please be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel, because I'm trying to hit 10k by the end of 2024, and we're already so close. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is the changes to the primordial caves itself. In these giant caves, you can now come across volcanoes, which are very common and are made of flood basalt, and are filled and covered with primordial magma, and has a volcanic core in the center. There's also two states of this block an active one which you can fall into but can't get out of and the unactive one which generates on the outside of the volcanoes and also will burn you when standing on it there's also a couple of new items that were added to this biome like poo and sap which you get when you put a poo and branch in a furnace and you can use it to craft amber blocks when you place an amber curiosity in the middle of a crafting table and surround it with heavy bones you'll get an ominous catalyst what is it used for you remember those volcanoes just drop the catalyst into the opening of a volcano and then the sky will turn red and ash will float around and a giant undead seropod will crawl out of the volcano. Introducing the new boss, the Luxtractosaurus. It has 600 health points. It can do 12 attack damage. On summons, it will jump out of the volcano. Its abilities include slamming with its front legs, making pieces of the landscape collapse. This beast can also cause fissures to appear in the ground when stomping. It can whip his tail, which disables shields, kick mobs away at far distances, and scream super loudly to communicate with the volcanoes, which will help it in the battle by making it able to breathe fire and cause tepra blocks to shoot out of the volcanoes. When it's unable to reach its target, it, it will simply launch itself to a different area. Using water against this boss isn't any use, since it will turn that water into stone. But after you've eventually defeated this boss, it will fade into flaming ashes and drop a decent amount of tectonic shards. Now that the world is safe again and the fissures are closing back up, a new mob will start to spawn with monoliths and will start a migration, the Etla Titan. This is the nice variant of the Lux and loves to feed itself off of the leaves and the poo and needles. It is a neutral mob, which means it can also kick and stomp any mob that attacks it. Although it's not tameable, it will be a temporary mount when fed serene salad. This magnificent beast can also flatten the landscape to make building bases in the primordial caves an easier task. It can be bred with three stars and will drop a ton of heavy bones and dinosaur chop when killed. And lastly, the Atla Titan has an amber variant as well. Back to the tectonic shards. The tectonic shards can be used to create a new weapon called Extinction Spear, which has the power of other dinosaurs, their spirits. You can also craft an egg of a very powerful mob, the Tremorzilla. With the help of tectonic shards, a Tremorsaurus egg, and a new drop from the Hull Breaker, an immortal embryo, you can craft the egg. After nuking the egg, the Tremorzilla will hatch. You can tame it with waste drums and you will be able to ride it once it has grown to its adult state. Its abilities are stomping, swimming, whipping its tail, roaring, which makes the mobs near it run away, and when it walks around it can also destroy most of the landscape. You can also charge up a large beam while locking in its dorsal plates. This beam can destroy almost any block in its path and can reach 100 blocks in length. After using the beam, smoke will come out of the Tremorzilla's mouth. It will be on a cooldown before being able to use a beam again. You can also breed to Tremorzillas by feeding them nuclear bombs. Lastly, this big fella also has an amber variant, but there's another variant that you can get with the tectonic shards. In fact, there's a tectonic variant for every other dinosaur mob besides the Lux. Next, we have a couple of other small things that were changed and added. We have two new blocks for the hazmat blocks. The pure darkness item got a new animated look. The totem of possession got a small tweak, and we also have a new disc called fusion that can be crafted with nine of its fragments. These fragments are only obtainable after killing enough new cleavers with a Tremorzilla. So now we have the enchantments. First, we have the enchantments for the extinction spear. We have plummeting flight, which will make a mob get lifted up higher. Next, we have hurt phalanx, which adds more grotoceratops heads to block off attacks. And then we have chomping spirit, which will add more melee damage. Next, we have the primitive club, which has dazing sweep, which makes the range bigger, making you able to stun several mobs at once. Bonking, which increases the chance of mobs dropping its head. And swiftwood, which makes the cooldown less long. Then we have the ray gun, which has x-ray, which makes the ray go through walls. Energy efficiency, which is basically unbreaking for the ray gun. Solar, which recharges the gun when in daylight and Gamma Ray, which gives off a blue radiation. Next, we have the Ortholance, which has Tsunami, Second Wave, Flinging, which causes the player to fling to a greater distance, and Sea Swing. Then we have the Magic Conch, which has Charting Call, which allows you to summon more Deep Ones, Lasting Morale, which makes the Deep Ones stay 20 seconds longer, and Taxing Bellow, which prevents the Magic Conch from losing durability at the cost of decreasing the reputation with the Deep Ones. Then we have the Sea Staff, which has Sea Pairing, which restores the Staff's durability when underwater, Bouncing Bolt, which when the Water Projectile hits a target, will bounce away, Cripple Splash, so Seeking, which is basically Amba, and Enveloping Bubble, which gives the bubbled effect to mobs when hit. For the Resistor Shield, we have Arrow Inducting, which turns all arrows that were deflected into Seeking Arrows, and Heavy Slam, which deals more damage. Next up, we have the Galena Gauntlet. We have Field Extension, which increases the reach, Crystallization, which makes you able to hold Diamond Tools, and First Haste, which makes you mine faster. Then we have the Desolate Daggers, which have Say the Blades, which increases your saturation after each Ghost Attack, Double Stab and Impending Stab, which delays the Ghost Stabs, but increases the damage. Then we have the Dreadbow, 
bow. For this weapon, we have Precise Volley, which strikes an area more precisely, Dark Knock, which increases the loading speed, Shaded Respite, which prevents the loss of durability during the night, Twilight Perfection, which makes the arrows turn red at an exact moment, dealing more damage when striking an enemy, and Relentless Darkness, which literally turns your bow into an automatic gun. And finally, we have the Totem of Possession, which has Astral Transferring, which causes the possession to pass on to a mob with higher health or a healthier mob in general, Sightless, which makes the possessed mob blind, Detonating Death, which is basically a self-destruction mechanic, and lastly, Rapid Possession, which increases the speed of the mob. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys really thought I forgot about the best feature of all time?